just click on to that link or if you're there in your uh, website or, uh, or in your desktop or in your laptop just click on to that link and use that code uh, to go to an activity right I, I want all of you to go there uh, so go to menti.com and use the code five four zero one six nine zero three so I want all of you to go there. We'll have some participation. That would be very nice if you could do in this evening stuff, hearing a lot of lectures. So I want all of you to go there. And there would be a question waiting for you. And the question is, do you want to become an entrepreneur? There would be two options given to you. One is yes, and the one is you no. Know. I want you to click whichever options that you are liking to uh, click it. So it does not mandate that you have to give yes. Uh, you can give no also if you don't know that uh, you have the skill of becoming an entrepreneur also. You can click no or else you just give yes. So I'm going to share that screen also to you so that all of you could uh, see that. Okay. Okay. I'm going to share my entire screen so that you could see what is happening. So I have four participants uh, or five participants saying that I want to become an entrepreneur. OK, uh, quite interesting. I want all of you to go and participate. The procedure is very simple. Go to menti.com and use the code 54016903. You will be directed to a website. Uh, and then you'll be having a question asked, do you want to become an entrepreneur? Uh, there will be yes and no. I want you to click on whichever the option that you would like to give. So we'll just wait for a minute so that all of you can uh, Login. If you have any difficulties, you can just uh, unlock your microphone and then uh, talk with me. Right? Uh, uh, is there any difficulty in getting that? Or uh, can you do it? All right, I have about uh, 20 participants. So it would be nice if all of you could participate so that you would get something. So this, this session is all about discovering yourself. So I want you to participate so that you can discover yourself better, whether you are an entrepreneur or not. Let us see. Uh, so out of interest, we are falling into this uh, program. So let us participate. So if you have any difficulties, you can let me know so that I can sort it out for you. OK. Uh, only five participants have given. OK, assuming that uh, the uh, others uh, have uh, not got the options. Uh, so. I'll, Want of time, I'm just going to back to my PPT and uh, I go to this question Who are entrepreneurs? So, so out of 20, maximum five, I have given the options Who are entrepreneurs? And I have asked you uh, the question Do you want to become an entrepreneur? And you have told yes. So, now uh, the question uh, is like, how Do I have the skill of becoming an entrepreneur? Right, that would be the uh, question running in all of our minds. Right? Then, if so, who are entrepreneurs really are? So I can uh, give you two uh, options. Right? One is called the business. Right? Uh, businessman. Can we call a businessman as an entrepreneur? Right? Anybody? Uh, only twenty are there. Uh, you can unmute and then talk. Uh, that would be interesting. Can you call a business gentleman as an entrepreneur? Or when can you call an entrepreneur as a businessman? That that would be a perfect question. So, uh, any answers? Any answers you would like to share? Anybody? Anybody can uh, have a chat. This would be like a discussion so that we could uh, discuss and then find out what we are trying to figure out. Who are entrepreneurs? So I'll I'll put it in a very nutshell. Right? If there is a problem, and if that problem is being solved by an individual and in return they earn money out of it they are called as entrepreneurs and later on they progress in that particular field to become a successful businessman so it is all about finding out a problem and then solving that problem effectively is it very easy right finding out a problem and solving that that is quite easy and then all of us can become an entrepreneur then why are we not moving forward to that what is that hesitant that we have? And uh, if there if there are a question like uh, in your family, you go and talk with your family members that and and one fine day you go and say to them that I want to become an entrepreneur. What would be the immediate reaction from your family members? Anybody? We'll have an open discussion. What would be the immediate uh, reaction from your family members? 
you can type it in the chat box also i can i can see that if i go one fine day and tell to my family members tell to your uh, father or your mother or your spouse that i want to become an entrepreneur what would be their immediate reaction any answers any answers those who want to take a call just just simple question right uh, what will be their reaction i go and tell that tomorrow i am going to start a venture what will be their response am i audible am i audible ah uh, uh, you are audible yeah yeah okay okay, okay they uh okay, i'll just stop sharing it i just want to see the chat messages okay they give a shock reaction is a discussion about how and which business they may not engage that or encourage that pretom you can say that word right uh, they may not encourage that so oh, why is that why is that uh, so why we are not been uh, uh, we are not been uh, sh uh, showcased to this particular uh, world which is there outside existing that uh, you can also earn money in that why why are we not uh, taking up that venture why are we not uh, doing that what may be the reason what may be the reason how many of you uh, just put a thumbs up if you say that fear just put a thumbs up emoji right thumbs up fear due to fear uh, i cannot become an entrepreneur just uh, put up your thumbs up if you say i have fear of becoming an entrepreneur i i have a fear of becoming a uh, an entrepreneur i have to take a risk in becoming an entrepreneur i i get fear in losing money how many of you feel like that just put your thumbs up yeah only one so all of you are ready 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 your thumbs up is going see uh i'll tell you one thing right uh, when we go for a job right when we go for a job why do we go for a job we want to earn money so what we do with money what we do with money anybody anybody who can put it on the chat box what so you go to a, you you study well uh, you finish your 12th grade then you go for your engineering or go for any particular uh, higher studies finish that then go for a campus placement take it up then you go for a job work hard for a month you get a salary then what would you do with that money that is my question invest in day to day needs okay fine got that answer any other answers invest in day to day it is investing in day to day needs or spending on day to day needs to fulfill needs and to live a better life right how do you do that better life right no i don't think so you know we have we do live a better life how how do we spend our money how do we spend our money see i i'll give you a one one piece of small uh, crust the money that we give, get out of that money how much money are we spending for liabilities liabilities in the means expenses you, you buy a car you want a house you buy a refrigerator you buy a bike right i got my first salary i do all this i have to go to a new home rent it out decorate it right i'll buy a, a bungalow i pay emi so what are we trying to do we are trying to spend a lot we are going to we are spending a lot how much money are we saving saving in the sense that is not putting into the bank or not that that we have it in our shelf how much money are you going to earn even while you are sleeping that is what buffett tell and how do we invest our money so how many of us thought that how do we invest our money in order to get it multiplied and have you ever thought about it right this is what makes the difference between an entrepreneur and a normal individual who earns salary right now coming back to the uh, question who are these entrepreneurs i can give you a lot of names those who are successful entrepreneurs what do they do exactly right what did they 
say for example elon musk what he does he whatever he has earned he puts back into the same venture and he tries to improvise that so the amount of risk that is a calculated risk that you are going to take is going to go back into your venture and where in turn you try to earn money out of that how do we earn money it is not simple we are going to find out a problem that right? see a problem in the society find out a perfect solution for that then try to create money out of the solution now definitely who is who is going to say no if you are going to give a solution for them to buy a product that that product solves their problem definitely people will be buying it right so uh, for example speaking right earlier days we used to go to hotels and uh, have our food now you book it on your mobile phone food comes to your home you have it in your home you don't stand in a queue to book a movie ticket you book it in your online apps you don't uh, go to a uh, book a taxi 3 days 4 days before to travel from one place to another use your ola finish book it now cancel it now everything is happening so we make people life better and we make people life better and if we do that that is where money pours in so this is how you have to identify a problem so now I, i'll go to my next slide okay which is more interesting right i'm going to show you this particular slide let it be there for a while i want you to take a piece of paper with you and you are going to do this activity for me right i want you to take a piece of paper now i have told you who can become an entrepreneur right? those who find a problem and try to solve it now i want to find out whether you have that interest or not so do this exercise genuinely and frankly I i'm not going to ask you anything just do it if you do it you are going to have the fun out of it and it would be a really a really a very good learning experience now this is the table that i want you to fill it up i have a question called area of interest and i have three columns left out if you have more number of area of interest you can put it out now before filling this i just want you to make one thing very clear very very clear there is a difference between a passion and a pastime passion and pastime listening to music listening to music is a pastime whereas composing the same music is a passion say for example ar rahman has a passion of composing music he has a passion out of it and we used to listen right we pay money and then we get their uh, soundtracks and then we used to hear it so what we are doing we are passing our time collecting coins is a passion cooking is a passion gardening is a passion seeing movies uh, watching tv socializing surfing the web using right all this instagram all all this stuff right these are all pass away time it is going to eat away your time so you have to make one thing very clear before filling up this the area of interest that you are going to write should be your passion which has something productive so i want you to fill up at least minimum of three area of interest which is your passion so right first of all fill that column only that column i will go to the rest next first of all fill area of interest do it genuinely this exercise is going to help you a lot do it genuinely right area of interest fill out the most important passion or the most likable passion that you do fill it up prioritize it right 1 2 3 prioritize it I, i'll just wait for 30 minutes 30 seconds for you to fill it up so i'll go to the next uh, question after that so what you are going to do you are going to take a paper area of interest you are going to fill minimum of three passion that you have uh, so that you like that doing always right area of interest i'll wait for 30 seconds uh, so i'll give you time to fill it up if you have any questions you can post me then and there so that we could clarify uh, clarify it uh, while doing it so so area of interest 1 area of interest 2 and area of interest 3 right another 10 more seconds
Okay. Right. A any acknowledgements? Uh, those who uh, want time, can you just uh, unmute yourself? So can I go to the next? Okay. Okay, fine. Now you have written three uh, area of interest, right? So now come to the first rule. You lose track of time while doing this. You are going to write only two answers. One is yes, other one is no. Yes, no. So you have written an area of interest. Say, for example, your area of interest is cooking. You lose track of time while doing this. If you write it genuinely, frankly, don't fake yourself. If you say, yes, I love this cooking and uh, I lose track of time while doing this, if you feel like that, you give yes. Or if you feel that, no, I, I know I'm wasting my time. I know, right, uh, uh, that is I'm losing track of time. Uh, I, uh, I deliberately know it, right? Say no. Right, while doing this, you lose track of time. Uh, you, you will spend a lot of time for this. If you don't do that, say no. If you do that, put yes. Right. The next question, you have the requisite talent or skills to do this. So your interest is cooking, right? You know how to cut a vegetable. You know how to put spices. You know how to uh, cook food. Uh, you know how to even boil a water. That is OK, right? You have the talent and skill. Even taking out the hot boiling pot out from the stuff to the uh, nearby shelf, that is also a talent without spilling on yourself. So if you have that required talent or skill, put yes or else no. Right? Yes, no, only two options. The next option. You take, you do not need to be pushed to do this. Nobody uh, is there at the back of you to tell you that you are going to go and do this activity. You do it by yourself. Right? You take the initiative, you do it by yourself. You take the responsibility, you do it by yourself. So if you are that kind of a person, and if that passion is going to say that you will take initiative, put yes. Or else put no. Yes, no. The fourth one. You, get, you grab every opportunity in this area to improve your skill levels. So what you do, whenever there is uh, any cooking channel you see in your YouTube, just go there, see what is what they're doing. So whatever, they, any, any chef is coming over there, you go and talk with them. Uh, you go talk with your uh, uh, relatives if they cook very good. So what you do is you take all the opportunities, wherever you find opportunities lying ahead, you go and grab it eventually. So if you are that kind of a person, put yes or else put no. Even if the activity is challenging, you know that this is quite tough. I can't get this result out. You will take it up. You will take the challenge and you will try to do it. So that kind of a person, put yes or else no. Got it? So five options. So you have written either yes or no. So you have written three area of interest. You can put the same, right? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, whatever it is. So if you have written all that yes, no in that particular table, now, just see in each column if you have written in a column all the options are yes all the five options are yes let's see it if there is even one single no just leave that if all the five options are yes that is your passion and if you're going to work on that passion you would be successful in any kind of venture that you do right this is how this is how you can identify what is your passion, right? That's why I told you in the beginning itself you have to be very very genuine in writing uh, the area of interest. So if you have a one nose or two nose or three nose, four nose, no, that is not your passion at all. And if you even can't find your area of interest, this is the right time to just focus on what is your passion. Try to focus on your passion. If you do something out of your interest and somebody is going to pay you money for that, well. Uh, that what is not peaceful than that, right? This is what you find. Uh, what is your flow? A flow is your passion. And if you're working anything with your passion, you'll be successful. Hope you have got some insight in this particular activity. The next one that I'm going to focus is, so now I have understood who's an entrepreneur and uh, what he is going to do. And now I'm focusing on myself that, okay, my passion is this. Now, 
I have a passion, right? Now I have to find out something very interesting to solve. Now how do I go and find out a problem, right? Problems are many. Problems, if you, uh, uh, who says there is no problem, right? When you ask somebody, do you have a problem? They will have a problem. Yes or no, they will have a problem. Even sitting in this class is a problem. Uh, going outside is a problem, right? Anything, right? Anything, you name it, you have a problem. So finding problem is not an easy, uh, it's not tough, right? It is very, very easy, finding problem. Anybody can say a problem. How do we find a problem worth solving? That is the question. How do you find a problem worth solving? Now, we know to do that. Design thinking principle is going to help you a lot. The first step in design thinking principle is empathize. Empathize. What is empathizing, right? You go step into your shoes and then see the world from their shoes. That is what empathizing is. Now, how do I know if I empathize? So this, is the, uh, this is the most important uh, uh, step that I would tell to all of my uh, people who are listening to my lecture. If you want to become an entrepreneur, you should know how to treat your customer because they are the, right, they are the God, right? They are going to give you the money. So you should know how a customer feels while doing a particular job. And in order to do that, you should empathize. You should know uh, how a customer feels by seeing in their, by sitting in their shoes. Right, I'll give you an example. Uh, so uh, where can I find a problem? I can find a problem anywhere. So in your home, right? In your home, go to the kitchen. Uh, you will find a lot of problems over there. Uh, Okay, now now take up for an example. I want to uh, peel garlic, right? Peel garlic. Peeling garlic is quite a tedious job, well, particularly for women. Those who are working in the kitchen. I don't think even women are working now. Even men are also working. Uh, so it, peeling garlic is quite tough. And I tried myself, right? I tried myself. It takes a lot of time to peel a bunch of garlic. That is the biggest problem. Are there any particular instrument which could peel a garlic in a small scale where I could use it at my home? If that kind of an instrument is there, well, that would be easy. Now, now there is a machine which uh, chops onion, right? A simple drag drop machine which chops onion. It is simple. You know, don't need to uh, cry for uh, cutting onions. So now we have this particular tool. Similarly, uh, if you have a tool for peeling garlic, that would be a very good product. So how do I know that? So I empathize myself, right? I go see or feel, I'll just observe. Empathizing is just observing. Observe, observe, observe. And I find a problem. Now, is it worth solving? I don't know yet. Let us see what happens. So finding out problem is just by observing what happens. You go to a bus stop, just stand there and observe what the others are doing. Go into a bus, See what the conductor is doing. See what the what the driver is doing. What are the problems that they are facing? Right. When we see people, right, we not to talk at all. Just observe, empathize. You will get n number of problems. Okay, fine. I got a lot of problems. Right. Always an entrepreneur cannot work in a single. Right. He has to have a very good team. Right. So you team members come together and then sit down. And then you do a brainstorming session. I have some 10 problems. You have some 10 problems. Like put every problem together. Let us discuss. Let us discuss and then we'll define one problem which is going to solve all the pains of the customer. Right? When we discuss, right? When we discuss, we'll have a lot of uh, solutions that we can try to figure it out. We'll say that some solution is not going to uh, work out. Right? You do a brainstorming. Brainstorming is like you collect all your ideas. Don't reject anything. You collect all your ideas, jot it down, and then find out whether it is feasible in carrying it or not. If it is not feasible, put a cross. If it is feasible, put a tick. Then do one more brainstorming session. Define a problem correctly. Then ideate it. Right? Now I have got a problem. I've got a solution. How to uh, solve it. Now I'm going to ideate that solution. I uh, put a rough sketch and then uh, do some uh, uh, do some small prototyping and then try to work it out whether it is working or not. Tell take, take this prototype and then show to your customers, those who have got the problem. Get their feedback. Do not to sell it out. Get their feedback. If they say that this is not going to serve the purpose, just leave it. Just go to another uh, problem. If they say that this particular uh, minor thing can be tweaked, you can do that. 
and go back to the defined stage and then discuss, then ideate, and then do the prototype. Again, go for testing purpose. Go to the customer, get the feedback. So this is a iterative process. It is a cyclic process. So you will be keeping on doing this again and again, again and again until you feel something that confident that if I'm going to go with this, I can sell it out. People are going to buy my product because this is the need of the If you get that confidence, then we can go to the marketing phase. So until then, you are going to go into this design thinking steps. So now this particular design thinking came into the evolution of startups. So when you say startups, that is startups is not small, right? It is very big also. Uh, the amount of work that we do in startup is quite huge. We can't say that startups are a small version of business. And startups evolve into a business. But startups are uh, uh, something that you uh, you are going to uh, do it in a lean approach so that you uh, always do this design thing again and again and again. again. So startup is something that you have a problem, you try to solve a problem technologically, and then you give it to your customer. When the customer knows that this is going to uh, get their page rejected out, they're going to buy it. Now, I have two things to say. One is the value proposition, and the other one is the business model. I myself uh, term these two uh, components as um, uh, the heart and the brain of any particular startup or any particular venture, the heart and the brain, which is vital for a human. They're the same way it is vital for a venture. The heart is the value provision canvas and the brain is the lean canvas uh, or, or the business model. I'll come to that later. So if, if any one, one organ doesn't work, you collapse. The same way your venture collapse. So the first step that I would like to just put some ideas in us is the value proposition canvas. So here you have two segments. One is the circle, other one is the square. The circle is called as the customer profile, and the square is called as the value map or the value proposition. So you are going to work a lot on this particular segment in order to know if just to fit your product and your customer correctly. If this is not going to work out, you have to rework on this until you get it standardized with this value proposition. You are not going to go to the next step. You are going to rework on this again and again. So first thing that I would like to discuss is the customer profile. That is, customer profile is the basic understanding. What, what is the understanding? How do you understand your customer? Right? That is very important. There are three parameters in which you can understand your customer. One is the customer job, the pain, and the gate. What is the customer job? Right? You can define your customer job like functional job, a social job, right? the emotional job. Right? Uh, say, say, for example, uh, I want to... Uh, book a taxi for an example i want to book a taxi right uh, i'm not saying any particular examples over here right? uh, any particular brands over here just the customer profile i don't have anything in my mind i want to travel from one place to another via a taxi got it so now what would be the job of the customer how do i do it Okay, uh, right now I don't have Ola or Uber. Remember that. Right now I don't have any Ola. They say this is something like prehistory, uh, saying uh, Ola and Uber are not available at the, say, 1980, uh, 1990, something like that. So now, from one place to another, how do I do it? So I have to uh, fix a date on which day I have to travel. Next, I have to call one of the traveling event and then uh, check whether there are cabs available on that particular date. So this, this would be done advanced booking, right? So I have to check the dates, and then I have to tell it to my traveling agent, and uh, I, I need to look for uh, cars, right? Cars, I have to go and see also. Uh, what type of car is there? Uh, who's going to travel? Right? What is the charge? Uh, how, many, how much is the kilometer? How much is the beta? So everything has to be done prior, even before traveling, right? Then even uh, when you get that job to be done, when I travel in a car, these are the functional jobs, right? When I travel in a car, your social status also depends on the car. What type of car are you are you traveling? This is your emotional job. What type of car I want to book? Right, then uh, how, how much time do I, I need to travel? Right? These are all the jobs that I have to look it on. Now coming to the, this is the job that I'm doing, right? It is an action work. The next one is the pain. So what are the pains the customer would experience while doing the job, right? Before doing the job, after doing the job, 
what are the pains that you would experience that you have to find out say for example take the same uh, uh, cab example so while traveling what would be his pain so whether the driver is safe whether i am secured will that be any uh, malfunction to the uh, car right whether i would reach on time so these are all while well, these are the pains that i would experience anxiety some some kind of anxiety so these are the pains that i would be experiencing while traveling after traveling right will uh, what happens uh, after traveling will i get my back pain will i be safe uh, or, or, or will i be reaching the time on time if i don't reach on time what happens right what are the side effects that i have and those things will be there right these are the pain that is going to happen after you travel and even before right before the same thing that i have told right uh, uh, anxiety in booking the taxi itself is a pain how much time i have to wait is a pain and all this are listed out in the pains so you have to, i have still not yet come into one particular product these are the general pains what would be the gain so somebody can come to my place and then pick me up that is the pain so will i be uh, charged correctly and no excess or, or no excess money has to be paid very good i'll shall be reaching on time every time and these are the gain that i'm expecting nice to have good to have these are the gains that i would be having now come to the now now i have understood my customer right what, what who is my customer i have understood my customer what is his job what is his pain what what he is expecting all this i have understood now i am going to deliver a product to him now i am going to deliver a service to him that is where value proposition comes into picture what is the product or and the service that i am going to offer now you say i am having to i am going to tell uh, i am going to uh, you i am going to say a uh, service up here so now this is happening at the startup stage right at the initial stage now ola comes into picture ola is a service app where you can book a taxi and then travel to one this to another place so what is the pain that ola is relieving from the existing pain that the customer customer side and defect so already i have understood my pain of the my customer i cannot uh, say eliminate all the pain of the customer i can't do that it is not possible also so what are the most predominant pain that i am going to remove right booking and uh, cancelling is easy right i have a valet right okay fine good right uh, my I, i know who is the driver coming i know i can track my uh, location so all these are thing uh, all these are going to happen right even in gain i can give them right i, I can tell you exactly at what time you will be reaching i can tell you what is the amount of traffic traffic is happening i can tell you what so the charge rate my app you can rate my driver you can rate my cab everything is that these are the gain that i'm going to give it to my customers who else will not use this product i feel i'm going to use it so what i'm trying to say is your value proposition should be matching with your customer profile if this is not working out if you find that this is not trying to solve the purpose you cannot move to the next step you have to work on this again and again you know to make sure that your product and your customer are properly fitting a product and your market is properly fit one particular caution that i would give you over here is in the customer profile the pains and the gains what you have written is not the opposite of gain creators and pain relievers the pain in the customer profile is not the opposite of pain relievers remember this whenever you try to fill up this value proposition you should not write the opposite of this right these two are completely different the customer profile you are understanding the pains of the customer out of the n number of pains what is the important pain that you are going to relieve and while doing that while relieving that pain what are the gain that you are going to create that is what you are going to focus right hope you got some inputs on in that the next one is the heart right so this is the heart right value proposition is the heart the next one is the brain right this is more important so now i have got all my uh, product and the market fit is all there now i'm going to go to the next level which is the business model here i'm going to tell you a lean canvas lean canvas is normally used for startups uh, whereas we have the business model which has been designed by osterwald which is going for another that, that is in the early stage this is in the early stage and that business model is for the growth stage so now we'll focus on this early stage because we are going to develop a small uh, a, a problem i'm going to solve a problem and i'm going to initialize myself as a startup now lean canvas is the best uh, model for doing that here you have nine blocks right nine blocks you have problem have solution 
your unique value proposition, your unfair advantage, your customer segments, your early adopters, your channels, your high level concepts, key metrics, cost structures, and revenue streams. When one particular investor sees this particular business model, this is one page document, he will understand what is your entire venture is all about. Right? In this document, everything comes into picture. Say, what is your problem? List down your top three problems. And then list down your existing alternatives also. Who are your competitors? You can't say that I don't have any competitors. If you are delivering, a, a, say, a, a, a fruit juice, right? You, you are going to have a fresh juice. Your existing alternative can even be a water. Water can be an existing alternative because if you don't, doesn't have a customer, doesn't have a fresh juice, you can have a water always and then move on. So every problem that we identify will have an existing alternatives. We have to do a thorough research on that alternatives and try to find it out. And then find out, you can tell from your uh, unique value proposition, you can sell, okay, tell, okay, this problem, the customer will be having this problem. He has this existing alternative also, but he requires my solution because I have one, two, three, four benefits in that. Right, you got it? That is where you stand out from other competitors. The next one is the solution. Solution is what is the solution that you are going to provide to that particular problem, right? Next comes is the unfair. I have told you about the unique value proposition. Unique value proposition is uh, something which is very uh, compelling, which is very evident uh, that you make the customers to buy your product. You make your customers to switch from their existing alternatives to your product. That is what your UVP is. Then unfair advantage. Unfair advantage is something that no other people can copy your idea. No others can copy or duplicate your idea. That is what your unfair advantage is. Say, for example, you have a patent for your particular product. Patent for your particular product. Nobody is going to copy that. That stands your product, right? That is an unfair advantage. This is your customers. I'll say always, always choose the customer first and then go for the problem. Many a time what happens is we try to find the solution and then we go for the customers. That is not going to happen or help anyway. Always find out the customer, then you observe them, do the design thinking principle, and then you go for the solution. Normally people, what they what do we have is, we normally have the solution in your hand, and then we run around for the problem, and we run around behind the customers. That is, that is not going to make any sense, and you are wasting all your time and money. So find out the customer, just segment it, segment them, segment them according to your geographical, according to your demographical, according to the psychographic, right? According to their behavior, according to their benefits, and segment their customer, target your customer. Then after targeting, find out who are your early adopters. Early adopters are the people who actively seek a solution to the problem. Simple as it is. Say you, uh, an Apple phone is selling out. There are some people who buy that phone at any cost. They are the early adopters. They go, they use the mobile phone, and then they let you know what is that particular phone is all about. They are the early adopters. Right. Next is the channels. In what way do you reach your customer? What are the means? Right. Channels may be offline or online. O online, you go to your social media platform, you do everything, whatever is that, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, whatever is that. You do it, that becomes an online. Offline, you, you, you go to a hoarding board, you put in a newspaper, you do pamphlets, you do posters. These are something that you can choose in uh, the different type of channels. But I would normally suggest for startups is choose channels which is free of cost, whereas where you can reach a large number of people. Right? Choose particularly those kind of channels. And then when you progress, then you can invest much more on that channels. High level concept is something that you relate your service with an existing uh, established uh, solution. Like for example, YouTube equal to Flickr. Right. So if people doesn't understand what is Flickr, they can understand what is YouTube. Is. So they can correlate, oh, this is kind of YouTube. So that is how you have to write your uh, high level concept. Then is key metrics is how do you tell that your business is progressing? How do you measure it? Uh, how many number of customers coming into your uh, shop? How many number of repeat customers coming into your shop? How many customers are buying your product in credit? How many uh, customers are buying uh, with direct sales? Right? These are the key metrics. It's how you measure your business progress or your venture progress. Then comes the most important one, the cost structure and the revenue stream. Cost structure, how much amount of money that you're going to invest in your venture. 
cost structure can be like two three categories one is the startup cost uh, we have fixed cost we have variable cost uh, startup cost are the cost which occurs even before you start your venture like for registration right getting your dptt number that, that is putting into your, putting your uh, idea into the startup uh, india getting your uh, uh, getting your uh, directors uh, shareholding patterns uh, getting your uh, digital signatures so some of the money that you are going to invest even before you start your venture that comes under startup cost then one is the uh, fixed cost which you cannot avoid monthly monthly this cost is going to happen say the rent the electricity bill uh, the water bill the salaries these are things that we cannot avoid that comes under fixed cost variable cost are something like it happens right if you do some uh, uh, food business uh, what happens is uh, one day you may be using some kind of uh, uh, vegetables the other day the same vegetable may not be used you can have a different kind of a category so these things are variable right packaging delivering so these things are varying so uh, what we normally suggest is you increase your variable cost reduce your fixed cost right reduce your fixed cost if you want to buy a printer buy a second hand printer if you want to buy a monitor buy a second hand monitor right now or if you have somebody in your home who can lend it out take it out lease something lease your building so something you do in order to reduce your cost that, that is very important then is the revenue stream revenue stream is how much money or how much profit you get it that revenue stream can be primary and secondary right primary revenue stream is the direct sales that you do how much sales you do what is the money that you make secondary sales is say i do uh, run a, uh, ho a hotel venture and uh, whatever the customer who whoever the customer comes and have the food they pay the money that is your primary what is secondary i do some parcel services i do some home delivery this are your secondary revenue i do some bulk orders secondary revenue right so you should you should, uh, venture should have both revenues so one is the primary revenue other one is the secondary revenue then only your venture can sustain even at any at volatile uh, uh, hiccups or uh, in your death valley your uh, venture can sustain so this particular business model is going to play a vital role when somebody sees a business model they will understand entire idea about yours and the last one of today's session would be three basic plan as venture should have one is the people plan sales plan and financial plan these three are more or less uh, important uh, say people plan is how much number of resources that you require in your venture how much sales you are going to make that also is going to be a vital part how many uh, people are required to make a sales so people and sales are interconnected financial plan how much money you are going to spend on people to make a sales got it these three plans are trying you cannot remove one plan from another right these three are connected so you should know like right, for running an animation industry for animation venture you should know how much people you are going to hire right you should know the uh, responsibility of the people you can't directly hire uh, as a startup you should not hire many people and right? uh, the ceo would be the one who opens the gate of the uh, venture and then does all the work cleaning everything the ceo would be doing the founder will be doing and it takes time in progress and then what is the sales that you make uh, uh, you should have a prediction for 12 months how much sales i'm going to make for a quarter i'm going to how, how much sales i'm going to make right in order to make in order to increase my sales what should i do if i increase my sales i need more people if i need more people i need more finance if i need more finance i have to do higher number of sales so all these three are connected you can't leave any one at any one point of time all right now what i have uh, okay now i i am giving 10 minutes for the question answer session what i have told is a very important trust of becoming an entrepreneur one is to find your flow the second one is how to identify a problem worth solving the next one is after identifying the problem how a product and the market is fit together using your value proposition canvas then after doing your value proposition canvas go for your business model in your business model try to put your picture correctly and after that you should know these three plans right this three plans is a, is a very big topic that i cannot that like, uh, finish it in an hour uh, I, i'm giving you an overview on all this to you how much important it is right so if if you have these are all the uh, what i have done is in this in one hour i have given you one overview of how to become an entrepreneur there are a lot of things which would be happening uh, more in this 
and if you have another session or, or so we can discuss on each individual topic much more detail now i'm open to questions if there are any questions i can take it up participants if you are having any queries you can ask now if you have any questions you can put it in the chat box so that uh, we can take it up aras if you want to ask uh, kindly unmute yourself and you can ask the question through the microphone any questions okay yes participants do you have any queries okay okay i think every uh, everybody clear about your uh, lecture i think so okay they are asking for uh, recording okay. yeah sure uh, actually the recording will be provided through the youtube uh, in our uh, department uh, youtube channel if you want you can view through that is it okay yeah if you have uh, any kind of ideas that you want to uh, make over or if you want to have some mentorship you can always do uh, reach me out uh, uh, you can type my name in, in google get my linkedin connect you can connect with me in linkedin uh, and they i'll be very happy to help you and this is also part of my responsibility as an innovation ambassador so i'll be very glad to help uh, anybody who has some very good ideas uh, so that we can incubate that and then uh, try to improve it Uh, there are a lot of funding schemes also available uh, in the government so all you need to have is a very good idea and a very good solution i request any one of the participants to give your feedback and uh, about this session on today please anyone they are typing it out Yes, yes. Sir. Anyone, please unmute yourself, and uh, you can also talk. That will be fine for us. It will be nice to have so far. I, I I'm talking, right? It would be nice if anybody could uh, speak out and then uh, yes, tell yes. about the session. Anybody? Yes, sir. uh baskar sir can you talk uh, something about this session okay sir uh right shall we close the session now yeah ah uh, yes sir uh, actually participants uh, this is the feedback link that you have to provide your feedback and it will be considered as your attendance uh, within 7:30 you have to fill up all your feedback 
and uh, you can receive your certificate within four days within four man days you will receive your certificates uh, through your email id and uh, uh, now it come to uh, conclude it with word of thanks uh, now my heart grips with joy and happiness so stand in front of you all in through through the offline mode to deliver the word of thanks and it's a memorable session and and uh, i'm very humble and privileged to thank our guest of honor mr satish prabhu uh, for the you uh, is lecture as a wonderful one and uh, um, through that session we can uh, got how to become an entrepreneur if we have to become an entrepreneur we have we should have the design thinking value proposition and basic plan and it's very excellent sir thank you and thank you. yeah and next i thank our uh, director sorry chairman and director uh, of our institute who are uh, helping us in organizing this seminar as a successful manner and also for providing the permission for that and also i would like to thank our uh, uh, principal and dean dr k v sriram and our hachori as well as our uh, below faculty members uh, who are contributed to success of this entire webinar and last but not least i thank are uh, valuable participants who are participating this session and making this session as a grand success thank you once again to all thank you participants you can leave now thank you ma'am ah uh, thank you Thank <laughs> you.